Senator Cotton also met with a President Trump earlier today. So, Senator, tell me about that meeting. What happened? Hey, Bill, it's great to be on with you. So uh, Senator David Perdue of Georgia and I went to the White House to meet with President Trump. We had a very good, productive meeting. We talked about steps he's already taken to get the economy moving, what we're going to have to do in tandem as a Congress with the president, especially on Obamacare and uh, tax cuts to get the economy growing even faster to create more jobs. And, and then in particular, legislation that David Perdue and I have uh, that would try to reorient our legal immigration system away from mass unskilled immigration, which has had some such a negative effect on working class wages in America and moving it towards high skill and ultra high skilled immigration as President Trump has said he wants to do. OK. All right. And we'll get to that in a little while. Did you ask President Trump uh, if he had any information he'd like to give you as a member of the Senate Intelligence Committee <laughs> backing up the uh, assertion that President Obama tapped the Trump Tower? Did you ask him about that? No, Bill. Uh, we talked about the economy, Obamacare taxes, and immigration. Were and that you was curious it. about that? Or I, w I mean, if you know. I so well, our inquiry and our review on the Intelligence Committee is, is moving forward at a good pace. We just got access to a lot of very important documents that uh, otherwise would be very closely restricted. I would point out that it was the Trump administration that gave us that access, not the Obama administration. So, so far, the level of cooperation we've received has been very thorough. And I look forward to moving uh, as quickly so. as we can in the Intelligence Committee okay. and making as, making as much of our conclusions as public as we can. I hope you do that. Now, there, it's a twofold investigation though, right? It's, was there collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia? And then, who's leaking out all this stuff? Are you investigating that, the leaks? Well, well Bill, I'd actually step back from those two items to the previous matter. The way this all started was the conclusions of the intelligence community that it was Russian intelligence services behind the hacking and the disclosure of emails from the Democratic National Committee and from Hillary Clinton's campaign chairman. Uh, we're digging very deeply into that assessment to analyze the uh, intelligence that supports those conclusions. In recent months, as you say, there have been numerous leaks uh, that allege some you know, very fantastical claims about relationships between uh, Donald Trump associates and Russian intelligence officials. That is going to be part of our inquiry as well. But you're very right that these leaks, uh, regardless the contents of them, are damaging to national security and raise the prospect of serious criminal behavior because they reveal potentially what the United States government knows what it doesn't know, and therefore what it has the capability of knowing, which we do not want our adversaries like Russia or North Korea, Iran, China. Sure. I mean, it opens up all kinds of things. But I'm a simple man. I don't know whether you know that. You're from Arkansas. But even down south, they know I'm simple. Um, and I want to know who ordered the wiretap on the Russian ambassador, which picked up a General Flynn uh, at we think the Trump Tower, but we're not 100 percent sure. I want to know what agency authorized that. Do you know? Can you tell me tonight who authorized that tap on the Russian ambassador? Bill, I'd prefer not to speak about Do you what, know? Surveillance or, what surveillance orders may or may not have been in place because it is a classified matter. But, but, but let me all right. the, Do you know who ordered it? Uh, Bill, as a member of the intelligence community, I am aware of and I follow closely what right, so our you intelligence know, agencies you know, do. You know, that's now we're getting somewhere. You know who did it, okay? And I understand if it it's classified, but you know, President Trump could make it unclassified like that. Boom. Well, he yeah. could he could say it's not classified anymore, and then you could tell me who ordered it. But let's. Let's hope he so, does so, that. So the, pre the president does have that kind of declassification right. authority. Um, I, I have suggested that, that some members, leaders of the intelligence community might want to make some kind of public statement, but I understand the reluctance of them and potentially President Trump as well, because those kinds of statements, those kinds of disclosures do threaten the collection I, I, methods I that we that. had I got it. It has to be done in an orderly way, but now let me take the next step. You know who did it, what agency did it. So you know who had the transcript made of it, because that the agency who tapped had to make the transcript. Then the transcript is leaked, so that you know which agency has to be investigated to find the leaker, correct? 
Well, yeah, and Bill, I, I'd make two points about that. Uh, first, we've seen media reports that suggested uh, Obama administration officials intentionally spread uh, intelligence information widely to include just raising it in meetings when it might have been inappropriate to do so. They claimed it was to try to preserve the intelligence. I suspect it was much more likely that they were trying to get it to leak. And then second, uh, something that many Americans don't realize, the FBI is not just a law enforcement uh, service. It's also our main counterintelligence service. The FBI is part of the Department of Justice. The Department of Justice until January 20th was run by Obama political appointees. And the main consumer of intelligence from the intelligence services is the White House and specifically the National Security Council. So you have many partisan Democrats who are receiving this information and I think there's a good chance that you might want to look to some of those partisan Democrats who left office on January 20th and are now being identified identified as former U.S. officials if you want to know where some of these leaks are coming from. Well, I it suspect seems the FBI that is doing are, just that. You're pointing a finger at the FBI that the leaks may have come from the FBI. Well, that it no, Bill. No, Bill. I, what I'm saying is that when the FBI is part of the Department of Justice and the Department of Justice until January 20th, which was a recipient and consumer of FBI intelligence materials, was run by partisan Obama Democrats. Oh, all right, all right but, but we, we want to find out who tapped the Russian ambassador and General Flynn, where it happened, and then who transcribed the conversation and leaked it to the Washington Post. I mean, that, it, again, I'm a simple the, man. That's what we need to know. And then the, le the leaking is the most important material. Right, because then you can because then you can that trace kind of information back. should never be in public. Absolutely, you can trace back whether that leak was ordered, or uh, where it came from, or any of that. So it sounds like you're you're hot on the trail. Would you say that's accurate? That you're hot on the trail of this? We're, we're we're moving forward very quickly, and we're trying to examine all aspects of it. Bill, let's say that. All right. Now we only have a minute. Your new immigration vision is to limit the number of legal migrants who come here for work. Is that correct? That's right, Bill. We want to refocus legal immigration on high-skilled and ultra-high-skilled immigrants who can contribute to our economy. They won't need to use any kind of public welfare benefits, and that'll mean higher wages for working Americans. Okay, but you what know, about the agricultural industry and the service industries, construction industries, who need unskilled labor to fill those jobs, particularly in agriculture? Well, Bill, I'm open to those kind of arguments. It's really a, an evidence-based question. I would note, though, that there is no job in the United States that is not filled by at least a majority, sometimes a large majority, of native-born Americans. There is no job in America that Americans will not do. Well, I don't know about Wait, that. Now, they have well, a very hard time in the Central Valley of California recruiting in that hot sun and down in Florida as well, people to uh, pick the fruits and vegetables. That's not an easy but, thing. But Bill, what I would say to that is that the solution, rather than importing more unskilled and low-skilled uh, workers, might be to raise wages for working Americans who haven't had a pay raise in decades. If you have a high school degree or less, sure, but you some can't people have, not, have seen their wages fall for 17. Well, if, if we don't have the large surge of mass low-skilled immigration every year that we've had for decades now, the market will work its uh, magic. Yeah, that's the, true. It raises would if there's not a, uh, the competing labor. Senator, we really appreciate uh, you coming on. I hope you'll come back. Uh, we want to continue Thanks, this Bill. conversation. Keep us posted on the investigation. It's vital to the country. Thank you very much. Next on the Rundown, Judicial Watch suing the federal government to get answers about the wiretap allegations. We'll have a report on that. Then later